everyone, my name is Brianna Mallory and I'm the Social Media Strategy Coordinator here at Aetna Interactive. With blogging being a marketing tactic that can easily be executed by a business, I'm going to spend a few minutes providing some beginner tips and one extremely important rule to always follow. How many of you have ever read a blog? Chances are the majority of you just raised your hands. With 60% of internet users who already read blogs, it's time to make blogging a priority. Let's dive into our first tip. Who should I write to? Pick a buyer persona that's reflective of your target demographic. If it's a mom in her mid-30s, for example, you can create a persona from her name to what she looks like, her home, and her activities. Once this is determined, write as if you're speaking to your persona. This will help your blog stay consistent and lay the foundation of trust between you and your potential patient. Our next tip, what do I talk about? Start with answering questions you and your staff most frequently get asked by patients. I guarantee your other patients have these questions too. For example, what will be accomplished during a consultation? What are the most popular treatments, procedures, and why? Why aren't surgeries being booked after consultation? If it's fear, debunk this fear. Tip number three, what tone should my blog have? Blogs are a great way for patients to connect with your brand in a way that your website can't do on its own. To put it simply, be you. Deciding to have a procedure or treatment is a big decision. Patients will not only select a practice based off the doctor's qualifications, but also his bedside manner. Your blog can be a great way to reflect that. Let your personality shine through and I promise your patients will have an established relationship with you before ever meeting you in person. Scheduling blogs. Be consistent when scheduling your blogs. This will give the readers a chance to know your publishing schedule and when to come back and visit your blog. If you publish randomly and people come back to your blog and it hasn't been updated with new content, there's a good chance they're not going to return. Tip number five, the really important rule to always follow. If there has to be one takeaway today, let this be it. When using before and after images in your blogs, make sure to never save the image with the patient's name. Google will crawl all aspects of your blog post to help your web page rank for relevant searches, including the image file name. Let's say Jane Doe, a well-known person in your local market, had a mommy makeover and she kindly gave permission for her before and after image to be used for marketing purposes. Because of this, you wrote a blog about mommy makeovers and showcased Jane's before and after photos. When the images were saved and uploaded to your blog, her full name was used as the image file name. Remember when I said Jane is well-known in her local market? Because of this, she is often searched in Google. Well, someone Googled Jane's name and voila, her before and after images showed up in Google right next to a mixture of images of her at local events, images with her family, etc. As an example, I Googled my name and threw in a before and after image to show the severity of this. No doubt this is a concern for HIPAA, but to think about the ramifications in regards to word of mouth marketing could be devastating. But let's not end on a negative note. Showcasing before and after Photos in your blogs is a very beneficial tactic and will help prospective patients make their decision on whether or not to have a procedure done at your practice. Still use these images and save them using a different format rather than their name, for example, a case number. To wrap up, marketers who make blogging a priority are 13 times more likely to have a positive ROI. To learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, happy blogging!